Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today the team number color based psychological warfare against the Viper continues as this time Quang Tree or Chi playing as the Chinese in yellow prepares to take on the man himself playing as the Huns in blue. Now while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to get their butts up to Feudal Age ASAP, why don't we take a look at the Civ matchup but before we do, an interesting little factoid that I'm noticing right as I begin to cast the game, we've got two civilizations that don't need houses to start the games. The Chinese town center gives 15 population space. The Huns don't need houses or don't even get houses at all. So what an interesting little matchup we have before us. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. And by we, I mean I am the Chinese, a well-rounded civilization whose economic bonuses, strong tech trees mean a player has a lot of options on how to crush his or her enemies. To start with, all technologies for the Chinese get progressively cheaper, starting in Feudal Age, 5%, 10%, and then 15% cheaper in Imperial. Their farms seed with 10% more food, and as we just saw, their town centers do give 15 population space instead of the usual five. By the way, they also come with plus seven line of sight. That gives you so much line of sight, you're actually able to see a good number of your starting resources which does allow you to better focus your scouting. As always with uh, the Chinese in the game, I'm going to try to remember right at the end of the game to zoom back to that first split second so we can see just how much extra line of sight the Chinese get and just how powerful that feature is. Now you also hit the ground running as the Chinese because you do start the game with three extra villagers, but 200 less food, which is why you saw the Chinese with a little bit of downtime as they always tend to have as villagers gather underneath the town center at the very starting seconds of the game. And why you'll see Quang Chi already has 22 seconds of idle time. Not unusual for the Chinese because of that unique, confusing uh, start. Now to help defend the Chinese economy against raids, they can upgrade their walls and their towers to get 30% more HP and that extra line of sight on the town center. That just means you're able to see raiding coming from a mile away and then garrison your villagers a lot quicker and react a lot faster. Now on the battlefield, the Chinese can field all top of the line infantry units, although without supplies, be prepared to pay a little bit extra for your champions. Their foot archers, their skirmishers are also pretty strong, especially when you mix in their unique unit, the Chukanu. This is a foot archer that fires multiple arrows at once and can be upgraded to get a plus two attack boost. Now, while their cavalry is pretty good, Chinese siege itself can be problematic to fight since their scorpions can also be upgraded to get plus four attack. Guangxi, will he have trouble with the deer? These stubborn, stubborn deer going a little bit around the back entrance. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this town center says no shirt, no service, no deer, no service. Oh, look at that. Ultimately though, that weird, weird pathing of Age of Empires with the deer does push it underneath the town center as the viper as we saw in blue, begins pushing, I believe, his second, his penultimate deer. Yeah, all right, a few, or rather one, already dead underneath the town center. Good time for us to look at the Huns, a civilization designed to take the fight to its enemy with both speed and mobility. Their cavalry archers get progressively cheaper, 10% in castle age, 20% cheaper in imperial. Their trebs fire more accurately at units, and their stables work 20% faster which is fantastic because you can actually upgrade your stables to train the unique unit of the Huns, the Tarkin. This is a medium cavalry unit with pretty high pierce armor and attack bonus against buildings. That makes it absolutely fantastic at late game raiding and overall late game destruction. Not to help support its military, as we saw, the Huns, take a look at the top of your screen, already at 200 population space. They don't need houses. They don't even get houses which does free up a little bit of wood and villager construction time during the precious early minutes of the game. Although this feature does come at the cost of a hundred wood. So two very unique civilizations with two unique starts. The Viper again, as I mentioned, psychological warfare here with his opponents choosing his traditional yellow color and the usual caveat, because I know there still will be one or two people in the comments who say, I can't, this is unwatchable. This is totally, I, I'm done with your channel. You are just a piece of garbage. How could you not change the colors of the players? To that I say, write to this man. I, I said to this man as I pointed to the female villager, right, right to this llama. You know what? The llama gives about as much a shit as I do. Uh, the Viper chose to play this color. Uh, Guangxi chose to play this color. 
And so I'm not going to second guess or change the colors of the players. Deal with it. That is going to be, I'm going to put a standard pinned comment, maybe deal with it as the players we know yellow has discovered where his opponent is, has the Viper. The Viper hasn't even moved out anywhere onto the map, has decided to just push those deer. And now he's kind of just hanging out. Okay. So not exactly the Vietnamese starting the game, knowing exactly where your opponent is, is our Hun, but guess he doesn't really care too much at the moment of where his opponent is and where his our Chinese has already discovered, scouted the entirety of the map, has seen both lumber camps trying to <laughs> trying to annoy and lure some villagers into some action, into a little bit of downtime, has also, I believe, seen the barracks. Oh my goodness, he's also seen the stable? Okay, so fantastic scouting here for our Chinese. Okay, whose base now gets discovered? The Viper, by the way, if you're wondering why they know exactly where to go, when they discover this resource patch, they know exactly where to go because that is the primary gold, by the way. Bit of a longer, long-winded and longer introduction this game. Let's take a look at the actual bases. I like that our Chinese is creating a bit of a funnel here, not really using these long distances between the forests, which he has one, two, three of, but instead choosing to create a little bit of a nook with an opening. Primary gold very exposed to the front. Primary stone nice and secure in the back. Additional secondary tertiary gold nice and secure to the back. And then additional stone... Uh, not really on the attack path between the two bases, but close enough that it might be problematic. Although right now the Hun is heading south, not north. And right now both players have zero villagers on stone. So stone not exactly going to be an issue. By the way, three <laughs> scouts headed this way as well. The Viper already has his spearman. I'm assuming that our Chinese also has the exact same thing. Although his base is pretty much walled off and the spearman doesn't have to wait next to the wood lines. He is here and he is going to probably deter the Viper Maybe not, not if the Viper's got four healthy scouts from trying to penetrate this base. Uh-oh, Spearman, you don't want to get pulled out of position. You might want to plug up this hole here as well. But the wall-off should be complete by the time the Viper has any kind of a inclination to go into this base. And yeah, the Viper not exactly the one to take the biggest of risks when it comes to uh, risking his army supply at these stages of the game. But let's take a look at his primary gold also exposed to the front. Primary stone also secure to the back. Also, three forests. Two of them have already been walled off. Extra gold to the back. Extra gold to the back. Extra stone very far forward as uh, Quang Tri. Now, if anyone is watching this from Vietnam, I believe Quang Tri is a Vietnamese player. I, I've i read online. Uh, you guys know I try my best to pronounce the names of players, technologies, anything related to the game as accurately as possible. Sometimes I succeed. Sometimes I... Uh, how do I put this? Fail horribly and miserably. I believe this guy, this guy's name can be tr pronounced Quang Chi or Quang Chi. So kind of like with the Khmer, the Khmer that I like to mention both names. I'm going to say both. Maybe somebody from Vietnam or at least somebody who speaks Vietnamese, because I believe, again, he is a player from Vietnam, can tell me how to properly pronounce his name. I do know that this is the name also of a province of Vietnam. I say province. I'm not too sure what the demarcated territories inside the country of Vietnam are. And for example, in Canada, we have provinces. In America, you guys have states. Uh, in Europe, you have, I don't know. I don't even, I, don't, I actually don't know what you have in Europe. All the various duchies and uh, <laughs> all the whatnots of Europe. And even both players doing an amazing job not engaging <laughs> into one another. So 15 minutes into the game, good time for us to look. We've got a market, we've got a stable. Uh, blacksmith? No blacksmith just yet for our, uh, yellow Chinese. Who might be picking too good of a fight here. Oh, yeah, he gets the first kill of the game as the scouts finally do gun down one of those spearmen. Another spearman will die, but how many scouts will they take with them? Three kills for our Chinese, two kills for the Viper. Where was the third? Did I, uh, did I miss a kill? Or did I just not uh, see among the jumble of guts and viscera here that there are two blue dead bodies? Okay, I guess two of the of these scouts here. And what is the Viper building? Market. Oh, loses his scout as well. Market, we know he's got a stable. We know he's got an archery range. And he has a blacksmith. So basically one of everything he can in the feudal age as his spearmen now chase these Chinese scouts the hell out of town. And it is 
Huang Chi, who will be going up first to Castle Age. The Viper. I was gonna say, I hope he's got the got it cued. He is nowhere close to going up to Castle Age. And look at the defensive play here out of our Chinese. What he's doing is making sure that these feudal age units absolutely cannot penetrate the base because he is only a minute and a half away from hitting castle and once he does what's he going to do he's got 340 wood where's your military in industrial complex is it just the one stable you're relying on i mean how many houses here one two three four five houses blocking this feudal age army it looks like the final expeditionary force has died and is slowly melting into the sands as now all of the aggression is firmly on the western part of the map look i sorry i started look at the army counts <laughs> 15 to 0. the viper is down two villagers he's investing in bloodlines so these scout line units are going to have a little bit more of longevity okay there's the blacksmith finally has he revealed no he hasn't revealed the stable yet so keeping that very secure very secret by the way building a bit of a secondary wall off here which is an amazing play because he knew that the viper would bust into here but now he's in castle and four knights are immediately queued he's selling his stone he's selling his wood forget that second town center he says i've got more pressing matters like these scout units here now with 20 more hp each his villagers do have the high ground the knight do come out rather the knight does come out seeing as there's only one here what an absolute crazy little engagement here the archers are trying to do they looks like they've killed two villagers here uh, it says four no too economic okay so they've killed two villagers but now two knights here on the right are going to be enough to kill this two knights on the left are going to be enough to kill this and the viper's incursion is going to be dealt with and to be honest uh it, it did cost them eight villagers but quang Chi is in a pretty damn good spot here he's only down five villagers he is the one in castle age does have enough stone but now not enough wood for another town center although i question where he's going to even put a second town center i guess you have to put it in the forward position but at the end of the day he's got five knights they're going to have husbandry in a second no bloodlines just yet the viper's still a minute away archery range for our hun big surprise there let's see what our chinese player can do here Ooh, okay they disengage villagers preemptively get pulled the viper doesn't want to lose a single villager beyond the one he's already lost and there it is the very forward town center i mean i i, I was looking at the minimap you where you can't really place it here i guess you could place it here next to the gold and the wood but this gives you also an extra zone of defense against the any kind of, of the viper's attacks but oh, 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 oh man I bet the Viper wishes he was the Ethiopians, where these uh, spearmen automatically become pikemen upon reaching Castle Age. But no, it doesn't really matter. Spearmen, pikemen, there's enough of them here. How many? Nine of them are enough to shoo away these knights. The knights, now that with they have bloodline, probably could have taken that fight. Uh-oh. Viper. Viper's not paying attention. The mobility of the Cav Archer not being used as one gets gunned down. Two remaining ones have their HP dragged down to the 60s. But now the Spear are Pike. Now the Cav Archers are coming out. Five more are being trained. So the Viper going for the classic, classic Hunnic Cav Archer Death Ball. Going for that mass quantity. He's also getting Husbandry. Actually, without Husbandry, no, they should still be able to outrun 1.4. The one, oh no, okay, never mind. They do need husbandry to outrun these knights. Scorpion. So Kuang Chi sees that his opponent is going Cav Archers, gets that Scorpion. I am never, I'm never totally sold on the Scorpion versus Cav Archers. I think Cav Archers are just way too fast. Uh, in my opinion, if I had to pick a Siege unit, obviously wouldn't pick the Battering Ram. But the catapult, the mangana line would probably be the one I would choose. Just hoping for that massive shot to just take down half of the HP off of these clumps of units. So he's done a lot of running around with these knights. Their HP is terrible. Now they're starting to die. Now they're starting to get picked off. He's not even attacking villagers who are in his way. What is the game plan here for our Chinese? What is he doing? Because now this is starting to smell like a distraction to me. 
Now this is starting to smell like, hey, let's pull apart my opponent's army. Let's keep him running around in the middle of nowhere while I do something back home. So let's look at back home. More scorpions. He's starting to mix in camels. Fantastic counter unit to the Cav Archer because it is faster and it does come with that attack bonus against the cavalry armor, which the... Wrong. Uh, okay, you can't see. I guess when the armor is zero, you can't see what armor classes they have. But if the Viper just invests in padded archer armor, we'll be able to see that they, they do come with cavalry armor. So the camel does do a little bit of bonus damage. These four knights still around, still jerking the Viper's army around left, right, center, wherever they can. But uh, look at the army count. 31 to 9. Our Chinese economy is going to outboom our Hunnic economy very soon. The problem for him, he's going to outboom him, but there's going to be a lot of exposed villagers to 23 Cav Archers with plus two attack and range. The Viper realizing that, hey, there's nothing really here that can reach me. Although now he sees the Scorpions has to uh, second guess that. So I'm not really going to invest in armor upgrades. And this is exactly why I don't like Scorpions against Cav Archers. Although it does land a few decent shots. I mean, all of those volleys from the Scorpion Volts, one mangonel shot could have accomplished the exact same thing. And especially when you've got a big rectangular chunk like this, a good attack round could do wonders. Camels patrolling the perimeter to the north. It looks like the Viper has finally managed to kill the army to the north of his base. An engagement somewhere here that I can't really place my uh, finger on at the moment, but we'll have seen that in picture and picture. And now he's got 25 Cav Archers. They're going to have Ballistics as well. Oh, no. A third Town Center going up for our Chinese. A third one in the construction stage for our Hun. Who's slowly, slowly catching up in Villager count. He has four, <laughs> he has four times the army count. I mean, four times does include two Archers and nine Pikemen. And these Cav Archers are going to have a very difficult time trying to bust into this base, especially with these uh, thicker walls and houses versus just your standard 250 HP Palisade. Looks like a Camel did bite the dust over here. The Camel has about as shitty armor as the Cav Archer with a base of one. The Viper still hasn't invested a single cent into Cavalry Armor for his Archers. Cavalry Archer Armor, probably a better way of saying that. Got a bit of a force here parading to the center of the map on maybe relic duty. I mean, look at how much of the map the Viper has seen. Holy shit for a player who 10 minutes into the game hadn't even stuck his head out of his own base. Look at the mini map. This last scout, this is the last part that he hasn't seen that in a little bit of his opponent's base. Holy moly. Meanwhile, look at uh, look at Kwong Tree's vision. He's just seen the location where his opponent is beyond that hasn't seen that much. So that means the relics should go firmly into the hands of the Viper, who, by the way, also has a, a very good map control with this mobile unit who remains armorless and naked to the uh, to the elements going more and more scorpions. Camels engaging to the north, but not for very long. Once those pikemen show up, where are you going? Where are you going? Turn around. You were born to throw rocks at fast-moving objects and units, and that is exactly what you're going to do until the moment you collapse into a pile of kindling, and our Chinese wants zero risk here against the uh, laming of the gold, the farms, or any kind of center attack. Viper not really moving forward with enemy uh, villagers, except two here building that archery range as the monk returns home with a relic. And here we go. The Viper is going to force an engagement. Castle completes at the absolute worst time for our blue hun, whose cav archers are gonna get gunned down. There's villagers in here. The camels pop out. Remember, you can allocate where they pop out, but why are they running? They should be attacking. There's a lot of running around here by these camels. What a fantastic opportunistic get for our Chinese, whose castle manages to gun down 10 units. Now, a lot of those units were pikemen. Who's kidding who? But let's take a look at the HP of the surviving Cav Archers. It's down to 500. Down 500. And this is exactly... I mean, I keep saying this is exactly why I don't like Scorpions. I mean, microed properly, the Scorpions would do well. But now the Viper's confident that he's not stacking his units. Those Scorpions might kill a unit here or there. 
but it is worth it to get rid of that powerful siege unit. And what will our Chinese player do? He's doubling down on camel riders. The Viper finally has an armor upgrade, which does allow us to see cavalry armor, archer armor, cavalry archer armor. And that's about it. Our Chinese is now actually down five villagers, seven villagers. He's down a third, rather two thirds. He's got a third of the army count, but if his camels can close, look at how quickly they'll kill this army. He's trying to get the high ground. He's trying to get the surround. He's trying to push these guys back towards the uh, houses. So their avenues of escape are narrowed, but there's way too many cav archers. And now he's getting thumb ring as well. So the Viper is basically creating the quintessential death ball. And for Castle Age, these are about as good as you're going to get when it comes to generic. And by generic, I mean um, basically relying on university blacksmith and archery range upgrades as opposed to civ features. Although I guess you could argue a 10% discount is a civ feature. I just meant extra range, extra attack, extra armor, that kind of stuff. Ooh, will he catch out this small group here? The Viper is moving forward. But look at that. Quang Tree sees it immediately. He goes after the villagers. And the Viper, an interestingly placed castle. This is a castle to lame the gold and bust his way into this base. I mean, our Chinese was ahead in economy for so long, and yet his army count is just absolutely minuscule. It's 85% smaller, 90% smaller. Oh, and he tries to place an emergency castle, but the Cav Archers are here. He's pulling so many villagers, 22 villagers. The Vipers brought forth seven. He brought forth a lot more, but seven are the only ones that survive. I love that he's using a few archers to attack the villagers, a few archers to kill the camels. And yet again, for the second time, our Chinese army count is zero. Well, there you go. The Viper's heading up to Imperial. Now he's getting all of his economic upgrades in order. And man, did he just absolutely snowball out of control. The Viper putting on about a classic Hunnic game as you could possibly have here with these 10% discounted units, 45 of them. And our Chinese player maybe needed to con congregate, conglomerate. I don't know what the right word is. I always forget the right word I want to say. Bring together all of his various disparate army groups. He had seven camels attacking here. He had five camels attacking here. He had four uh, scorpions over here. One mangonel down here. He needed to bring all of that together into a giant fist and just absolutely try to deal and slam into these uh, cav archers. Otherwise, he's pretty safe at home. I mean, remember, the, the Chinese do have that great wall upgrade, which will add 30%. It's not exactly the most expensive upgrade. It is a Castle Age upgrade. So against Cav Archers especially, which do very little damage, I mean, eight attack, no building a, a bonus against a wall that has 10 Pierce Armor. So each one of these Cav Archers is doing one damage to a U structure that has 1,800 HP. And for those of you who play CBA, you know how futile it is to attack a stone wall with a Cav Archer and that perhaps is what our Chinese should have done. He should have walled off as much as he could. His stone count is not really that great. But remember, his stone was secure in the back. And now he's getting the additional gold as well. So not terrible, but maybe he should have used his stone. And remember this castle last minute. So he did have about 680 stone. I don't think he even needed this castle, to be honest. Let the Viper castle drop here. The problem is in two and a half minutes when the Viper hits Imperial... Then you've got a bit of an issue on your hands. But until then, I love there's all of these wall offs. The Viper's got mobility, which gives him map control. And then our Chinese just maybe should have, again, brought together all of his various army forces because you can't engage into a clump of 23 cav archers, maybe 25, with five camels, seven camels. You just can't. They're not going to survive. They're absolutely going to shred the light cab when they come into contact with them because they've got that plus nine attack bonus and their attack speed is pretty damn quick. But now look at the attack speed, 1.8 on the cab archers. So I, I wonder if our Chinese would have been better served here just kind of 
holding back a little bit, not really trying to defend as actively as he did. You know, you can give up this gold for five minutes. It's not going to kill you because you've got this patch right here. Right? I, I mean, let me know if you agree or disagree, because I, I feel like a lot of the losses that he sustained could have been avoided, especially if when the Viper showed up with 25 Cav Archers, instead of throwing four Scorpions, five Camels, seven Camels, a Mangonel, you threw 15 Camels, four Scorpions, and a Mangonel all together, then the Viper would have retreated. 100% the Viper would have retreated, tried to cut you, you may have lost five camels, six, seven camels, but you'll be safe, you'll be secure, and you'll uh, use that economic advantage that you had for the majority of the game right up until the very end when the Viper just completely outpaced his opponent off the back of eight archery ranges. But the Viper, honestly, putting on just an absolute classic of Hunnic play here with these cav archers. Let's take a look at the stats. 42 camel riders against 72 cavalry archers. I mean, I, I, I don't... I don't think the Camels win this in a, in a head-on. They might come close. There might be like 10 Cav Archers left. But the Camels, these are two units with absolute terrible armor. Zero base armor of any kind, I believe. PKPM, right? Uh, half middle of the game. PKPM, beginning middle of the game. Okay, so different times. Economies, I'm not, I'm so not surprised. There are only about 10, 15% difference in economy, seeing as how the villager count wibble wobbled here. Uh, you can see one well, one area of the blue line is higher, one area of the yellow line is higher. Make of that what you will. Three relics for our Hun only got him 287 gold. The game didn't last that long. And let's take a look at the actual resources. Food and stone going to our Chinese, wood and gold. Well, there's your cav archers right there. Conversions, zero. Buildings destroyed, five to zero. And final kill count, 63 to 107 49 villagers killed by these cav archers and that's why you have to stay behind closed walls situations like this are a nightmare to deal with because the cav archer can place himself here and by placing himself here he's got access to basically all of this area and then he can place himself here and then he's got access to this area then he can place himself right outside the castle firing zone here and have access to here that's what range allows you to do and that's why the Viper here has 49 villager kills. This band has zero. This band must have the majority. 62 kills, 29 of them villagers. That is a ridiculous statistic. So the Viper just built more, kept it alive longer, and killed more with it. And that ultimately won in the game. To put it as simply as possible now, the last thing I want to do, the absolute last thing I want to do, is go back to the very beginning of the game and show you guys that ridiculous... So let, uh, this is your normal line of sight, okay? This is it. This is what you see when you start the game normally. Forget the scout. He adds a couple of squares here. Not the, not the biggest of deals. You see your immediate surroundings. You see your group of uh, four immediate hurtables. And that's about it. You see some of these very pretty Monet lily pads, by the way, which are very, very pretty. Now look at the Chinese vision, okay? So remember, keep, this in your, keep this in your mind's eye, what you see here. Now look at this. <laughs> You see your gold, you see your berries, you see your stone, you see your forest, you see your four immediate hurtables. This is what seven extra tiles of range and line of sight, not range, line of sight looks like. Isn't this bonkers? Doesn't this immediately allow you to just uh, focus your exploration and focus your scouting immediately? Because you know the animals are all within a certain range. The boars are two tiles away from this darkness one tile away from this darkness. So they're all within the certain kind of uh, standard deviation of X number of tiles. But look at this bonkersness. That's crazy. I always like to see this right in the very beginning. Look how much more of the map you see as the Chinese. It's like Ethiopian uh, outposts. It, they're just, it's a ridiculous feature that I think uh, is, again, stone, gold, berries, forest. Jack shit. <laughs> Anyway, with that being said, the Chinese player just falls to the absolute, uh, what do we want to say, swarm, tidal wave of blue cav archers, and again, the Viper just putting on a clinic, and with that clinic, that classic Hunnic play, he just takes the W no matter how many resources our uh, Chinese tried to buy and sell, how hard he tried to balance his economy, he just could not compete 
with this death ball and cav archer is very much a death ball unit taps out lives to fight another day it is the viper in blue who does not succumb to the psychological warfare as he goes and gathers the fourth maybe even fifth relic to bring back to his monastery he takes the w but gg to both players did you enjoy this video check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads